Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. This time I will paint a rubric marine from the Thousand Suns. I have a Siege Demon army and I wanted to try these guys out in a separate detachment. I think they are pretty cool looking. The kit is relatively new and putting them together is a treat. These models have a bunch of gold trim and that will be the bulk of your painting time. But every other step is easy and quick. Also the new Thousand Suns Codex was out last week and I'm pretty excited about that and without further ado I will start. I'm going to start by priming the model in grey. You can use any primer that you like but because this uh, model is a fairly light color scheme I'm going to start with a grey base. For that I use Surface Primer Grey from Vallejo through an airbrush. You can use any other primer that you like. The first color that I'm going to use is Thousand Suns Blue and with this color I'm going to cover the whole model. Just trying to focus on those places that are going to be blue, which is most of the armor. And it uh, doesn't matter that you don't paint on other stuff that is going to be gold, but try to get a good base on those parts. Uh, I did uh, three coats just to make sure. I think two of them should be enough. Uh, but just make sure to thin down a little bit the color and use it all around the model. Let it dry. It may look a little bit um, uneven, but once you let it dry, you can come back and give it a second coat. Once that's done, I'm going to use Averland Sunset and with this color I'm going to paint the stripes on the headpiece and any other place that you, where you want to paint these uh, yellow and blue stripes. And this, this part is a little bit difficult to do, especially if it's underneath other details, so I'm going to do it now and get it, get it over with. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to get those uh, lines perfectly well coated. So we take our time and uh, use a small detail brush. This is a small layer brush actually from the new uh, range of Games Workshop um, brushes. And uh, just take your time and try to make a good job at covering those areas. Also make sure to thin down all of your colors. Next, I'm going to use Vallejo model color black. You can use any black color that you like. I happen to like this one. This color is for the joints in between the armor pieces and also for the bolter case. And little details here and there you can choose to paint black, but I don't think there were too many. Little uh, bits of, uh, of tube, you can paint them with this. And uh, just make, thin it down, make sure to thin it down and uh, paint these areas uh, fairly quickly. You can you also use this color on the silvers if you want. It's not necessary, but it's a good base coat to paint uh, before the silver. Once that's done, I'm going to use Celestra Grey. And with this color, I'm going to paint all of the places that are going to be uh, white or cloth, actually. And uh, just make sure to thin it down and paint these areas carefully with a small brush so that you don't paint on the blue or any other areas. And uh, try to uh, apply it on thin coats so it doesn't create any texture or anything like that. Once that's done, I'm going to move on to Lead Belcher and I'm going to paint all of the silver areas with this color. There aren't too many, it's just the bolter and some areas here and there, uh, the backpack and uh, little uh, tubes on the sides of the helmet and stuff like that. So uh, it's a pretty quick step just make sure to give them a good coat and that's it. Once it's done, I'm ready to paint the gold and for that I'm going to use Retributor Armor. This is a fairly easy step but it's very lengthy because it has a lot of trim. So I'm going to use a small layer brush and with this color I'm going to start painting all of these areas. Make sure to always check on your paint if it's not getting too thick while it's drying because it tends to get tacky very fast and you should uh, at least refill or rethin your color several times during this process and uh, don't try to use uh, thick paint while doing this it's gonna make it harder for you clean up your brush any every now and then so it doesn't get any dry paint on the tip and it's easier for you to paint and that's it just uh, paint these areas carefully not to paint in other places that you've already painted blue or any other color. Once it's done all of the base colors on this model are finished and I'm going to start washing this model with known oil and this is going to go in all of the creases and all of the places in between the blue and the gold just to get a little line of black in between those colors and also on the shaded areas and um, make sure to also get on all of those silvers and uh, I think that's it. 
and uh, I'm going to uh, be very careful and use the same small layer brush just to get a line in between those areas as neat as I can. Next I'm going to shade those gold areas and for that I'm going to use Raycland Flesh Shade and this is going to be uh, just a, an overall wash on those areas trying to avoid all of the blues and all of the places that are not gold just to get the, the detail on the, the armor just uh, popping up a little bit more and uh, don't go too heavy just uh, make sure to, that it gets on all of those recesses on the gold areas. Next I'm going to use Gilliman Blue and with this color I'm going to shade uh, the cloth and all the other places that you want to be white if you want to use white I'm going to make sure that this gets on all of the recesses but I'm going to shade the whole thing uh, just to make sure and that's it. At this point you can leave the model like this it looks pretty good for a tabletop standard you can just base it and use it like this but I'm going to highlight it further and I'm going to start with the blue I'm going to use Ariman blue and with this color I'm going to pick all of the edges on the blue areas uh, there aren't too many I'm not picking the areas where it touches the gold I'm just just picking the very obvious very sharp uh, areas on the model that are going to be uh, blue and that's it And because I wasn't too happy with that highlight, I think it was a little subtle for me, I wanted a little bit more pop. I went with uh, Temple Guard Blue and I started uh, edge highlighting all these areas again. There aren't too many, just a little, just little edges here and there. Uh, but I'm going to use this to uh, do a finer edge highlight on those places that are sharper. Just to give it an extra pop and make it look a little bit better. Next I'm going to highlight the yellow on uh, the headpiece and on any other place that you have these uh, little uh, stripes. I'm going to use an edge highlight of Ushap T-Bone and this, because the way the, the stripes are angled on the headpiece, I'm going to highlight just the bottom uh, edge on the headpiece and any other area that it looks like this, if it's angled upwards or it doesn't have any angle, you can just highlight the top where the light would hit it. Uh, but this, in this case, is just the bottom, uh, the bottom edge. Once it's done, I'm going to highlight the black, and for that, I'm going to use Ashen Gray. And with this color, I'm just going to pick the edges on the black areas real quick. This is a very quick step because there aren't many places that are going to be black. But uh, of all of those places, just uh, pick those edges with Ashen Gray. And to follow it up, I'm going to use Dawnstone and with this color I'm just painting the very sharpest edges on the black just to make them pop a little bit more. Just uh, pick the sharpest edges on the bolter case and that's it. Next I'm going to highlight the cloth and for that I'm going to start with Celestra Grey again and just try to pick most of the area just leaving the recesses and places uh, that are going to be in shade. The, the places that are folded inward, just leave them with the shaded Gilliman blue. But all of the other, all of, all of the other areas on the cloth, just try to pick them up again with Celestia gray. Next, I'm going to use Ultuan gray, and I'm going to continue highlighting the white cloth. And with this, I'm going to paint uh, towards the raised um, folds on the cloth, and leaving a little bit of the Celestia gray on the recesses and the shaded color. So uh, just to try to cover a little bit less area towards the highlight areas of the cloth. And to finish it off, I'm going to use a model color white from Vallejo. You can use any other white you like. This is just an edge highlight, just trying to pick those sharp edges of the cloth and make it pop a little bit more. Next, I'm going to highlight the silver. For that, I'm going to use Stormhost Silver. And this is an edge highlight on the silver areas. Just real quick, there aren't too many. This is going to be a quick step. Next, I'm going to paint the eyes and I want them to glow a little bit. I'm going to start with Warpstone Glow and make a glowing effect on the eyes. This is going to cover the whole area of the eye lens. It's just a very basic base coat. 
Once it's done, I'm going to use mood green and thin it down a little bit more than usual. And I'm going to use this to edge highlight the edges around the eye where the gold trim is, just to make it look like it's glowing. And all of the places that the light glowing out from the eyes would hit around the eye area. And that's it. Once it's done, I'm going to use uh, white again from Vallejo Model Color White. And I'm going to paint a little dot of white on the very center of the lenses to make them look like they're, they're glowing. So the little white dot is going to really enhance this glowing effect and make it look like it is lit up. And because these are like magically powered uh, marines with uh, souls inside instead of uh, people, uh, I thought they needed a little bit of extra pop. A little, little bit of magic going on. Next, I'm going to paint the jewels. And for that, I'm going to use Mephiston Red. I'm just going to paint the big eye shape on the backpack on this model. And I'm going to start with a base coat of this color, just make sure to thin it down well and paint the whole area with this color. Next, I'm going to highlight these red areas with a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet. And with this color, I'm just aiming at uh, highlighting the bottom half part of these jewels. Once it's done, I'm going to use Fire Dragon Bright and with this color, I, I'm aiming to do a, just an edge highlight on the very bottom part of the jewel just to make a little highlight and just doing it with the small layer brush and that's it. And to finish the jewels up, I'm going to use white again and I'm going to just uh, draw a little dot on the very top of the jewel just to uh, simulate like a little reflection of light. Next, I'm going to paint the runes on the bolter and any other runes on the black that you see. I'm going to use Nahilac Oxide, shake it uh, very well so it uh, is well mixed. And I'm going to try to paint all those recesses real quick with just a small layer brush and that's about it. And to finish this model up, I'm going to etch highlight all of the gold trim with uh, Game Color Polished Gold from Vallejo. And Games Workshop uses Liberator Gold if you want to do it like that. But I, I noticed that that color, it's a little bit more brassy, a little bit more silver, and it looks a little bit more like brass. And I like this polished gold look that I'm using with all my Demons of Cinch. And it looks uh, more yellowish. And it's, for me, it's a perfect balance between yellow, gold, and silver. And it, it looks a little bit more yellowish. And I like, like it a lot when you use on gold areas. They don't, look, they don't lose the gold, the yellow tint. And they look pretty bright and they look pretty good. So I'm going to use this color to etch highlight all of these areas. Take your time, just pick the edges and the most prominent parts on the gold and you're done. And this is the finished model. I have to say I had a lot of fun painting this model. I was a little bit skeptical on the look of these models, but once I assembled them and I started painting it, it's uh, pretty cool looking, and especially in person. And with a good paint job, they look pretty, pretty outstanding. Because this model has a lot of trim, most of the time painting is going to be picking up that trim. Uh, but it's worth it, and because this color, this models are a little bit more expensive, both in money and in points in the game, you won't be painting that many of them. So it's a good idea to spend a little bit more time to get that detail just right. And also you can get it to just a tabletop standard where I pointed you that uh, you could leave it like that. You can leave it like that if you want, and they look pretty damn awesome as well. And that's it. I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful and that it helps you paint your thousand suns. And uh, if you like it, please like the video, comment on it and subscribe to the channel to see more. Click that bell button so you don't miss any notifications and you see all of my upcoming videos and you don't miss them. And uh, please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed, great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work 
and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel it at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for